from the Shalom Hartman Institute in Jerusalem. The quotes at the opening of this video should suggest to you, and they suggest to me, that ethical behavior is a cornerstone of virtually all civilizations around the world. How much more so then for journalists and writers whose job it is, whose goal it is, whose passion it is to bring information to people to help them improve their lives. What I'd like to talk to you about for the next few minutes is the need for ethical practices in the kind of journalism that you're going to be practicing with the YALA program. In today's media environment, ethical behavior is more important than ever, especially because the traditional systems of media have broken down. The major global media are struggling to survive. New voices are emerging. Many institutions, organizations, individuals are reaching global audiences with their messages directly without the filter of a newspaper, television station, or radio station. Any one of you, by virtue of pressing a button on the keyboard of your computer, or even swiping a button on your smartphone, can create a global sensation by what you write, what you report, what you show with images, and what you put on video. Therefore, the importance of behaving and performing your work in an ethical manner is extremely important. In fact, one way that you will be able to cut through the clutter of information in the world today is to provide content that is trustworthy, that is honest, and that is fair. Now by saying that, I don't mean that you have to perform the way traditional, at least in America, traditional journalists did, which was a he said, she said kind of approach. Simply reporting what people said, occasionally getting a response from someone else, and then stepping back as if you had no role in anything other than transcribing their statements. That kind of journalism, especially for the people you are and the kind of work you want to do, will not be adequate. It will not suffice. It won't, and it won't work. No one will pay attention. That said, this doesn't mean that you have to be sensationalist, that you have to make things up, that you have to scream louder, that you have to put everything in capital letters to be heard. In fact, often the quietest voice is the one that's heard the most if it's the voice with the most authority, the most honesty, the most accuracy, and the most value to the reader or the readers or the viewers. So how do you do that? What can you do in your work as budding journalists, as citizen journalists, as reporters, as writers, as commentators on issues of significant importance in the Middle East, which will be read across country boundaries, which will be read perhaps around the world, which will be viewed on video or listened to around the world by people from many different backgrounds. How can you do this in a way to have the most impact? I think there are a few things that are important to know when you go about beginning this process. One of them is how different you are and how you must be different from the traditional or even the large existing media in your countries today. A global survey of journalism is not something we can do right now. But in short, let's say that in most countries, the media in many ways reflect the government and the society there. In the United States, for example, journalism is protected by the Constitution of the United States. In Europe, in Northern Europe, Western Europe, similar traditions exist, although not as codified as in the United States of America. What you get in Northern Europe or throughout Europe is journalism where opinion plays an important role, but it's opinion that is often colored by the traditions of the communities and societies that they're in. In emerging countries, whether it's China, North, any place in Northern Africa, where there is less political freedom and less of a tradition of independent media, 
Journalism exists, of course. Some of it's very good, some of it's very reliable. But it is very different from the journalism practiced in the United States or Canada or Australia or France or Germany. Your work differs from that even more so. Your work is personal, it's individual, and it's written or being produced for an audience of peers and hopefully a broader audience worldwide. You were selected and are training for this because you have been found as people, as young people, who can speak from the heart and can speak in an honest voice and can actually listen to others as well as present your opinions. But there are some things that I think that are important for all of you to keep in mind as you go about training and work beginning this work. First of all, a classic definition of journalism and some one that I think applies across all boundaries and across all styles and formats is that journalism is a search for truth. It's easy to say that, but what is truth, right? What is your truth and my truth may be very different. But if we accept the fact that we're seeking truth as we understand it and being honest with ourselves and being honest with the people that we are writing or producing for, then you will go a long way towards having credibility. And credibility is probably the most important currency, the most important value that you have. Your words, your pictures, your images will be heard, will be read, will be viewed around the world and judged by people from very different backgrounds. But they will judge you they will understand you better, they will trust you better if they believe that you're being honest with them. What does being honest mean? Being honest doesn't necessarily mean you have to accept everything at face value. Being honest doesn't mean you have to pretend to be a so-called objective journalist. But it does mean that if you know a fact, if you have information, you are obligated to present that information as accurately as you can. Again, in this day and age, there is very little consensus about what is accurate information. Um, in the case of the recent war between Israel and Hamas, there was a lot of information out there. Some of it was more reliable than others. Some, many of the people who reported one side or the other passionately believed what they were reporting was true. An objective, third-party, distance view might find some of that factual information to be less than factual. But, the, but what is important, what is key, what will carry through is the honesty of the people producing it. So that means in very basic practical terms, if you take a photograph, put the photograph online as accurately as possible. If you need to enhance the picture to make it more visible, that's one thing. If you crop it and so only a piece of it is showing, I think you need to be honest about the fact that you cropped a certain image because you had a certain idea of what you wanted that image to present. If you receive information from an organization, treat it with skepticism, even if you believe the organization. That doesn't mean they're lying to you. You don't have to say they're lying. But it is important for you to be skeptical of assertions by individuals with it with an agenda. And I'm not saying you shouldn't have an agenda as well in your writing. M much of what you do will in fact have an agenda. But if you don't present your agenda in an honest way, and if you aren't transparent about your own agenda, what your goals are, then it's going to be very difficult for people to believe you. Why are you doing this? What is your goal? It's important for you to explore your goals and your motivations then you will know what you're trying to do, and that will inform the work that you do. If your goal is to be a polemicist, to be, in a sense, a politician, then you're really not doing journalism. I'm not saying that you cannot have a political opinion. You cannot have strong beliefs. In fact, one of the things we've learned is that journalists who pretend not to have strong beliefs are essentially fooling themselves and, frankly, fooling the, the world at large. You do have strong beliefs. You have a baseline for what you're doing. And that's important, but it's important also to be honest about that. You believe that a certain thing is possible, and your writing, your reporting, your, re your video programming, whatever, your podcasting, will reflect your belief that this is possible. 
But if you try to reach that goal in a dishonest fashion by not reporting contradictory information if you're aware of it, by taking an ideological stance without thinking it through, by slanting, as it were, what's out there to suit your purpose, then you're not doing anybody any good. And frankly, you won't reach your goal anyways. People can see through it. In fact, it has been said, the internet is a truth serum. If you post an article that has checkable facts, and those facts turn out to be wrong, someone, I guarantee you, someone, whether it's with inside your organization or outside, will find that out and will therefore destroy your credibility by saying, this person knew that in this particular case, this happened, but they wrote about something else. You cannot recover from that. There are news organizations in the United States and in Europe and Asia and, and, and Russia that have lost all credibility because they were patently dishonest. Now, there are many temptations on journalists. For example, in China, where journalists don't get paid very much and are often, in fact, part of the government, they've been, they do two things. One of them is they will take money to write about products in the newspapers as if instead of buying an ad, they will buy the report or the reporter will write nice things about it. In, in the West, journalists will take junkets. They will take a free trip to some place in order to write about it. Now, maybe they couldn't have gotten there otherwise. Okay, that is acceptable, but it's important for you to say that. I wouldn't have been able to write about this hotel, this resort. I would not have been able to write about this war zone if group XYZ hadn't taken me. And it's important for you to know why this particular group sought me out to go cover this particular story. This is the kind of transparency that's necessary. This is the kind of honesty that will win you credibility. And so when I read your story and I see that you were in a difficult to reach place and, you were, but that, you were brought, and that you were brought by a certain organization, and that you tell me why that organization brought you there, what that organization was hoping to achieve, then you have built the kind of credibility with me that will en engender my trust in what you've then reported. Not, not every journalist is going to do that. And that's why there is a lot of material out there that people don't trust anymore. For all of the academic and journalistic work about ethics, Trust in journalists, at least in the United States and Western countries, has fallen precipitously in recent years if we were to believe the polls and we were to believe what people write about it. The other thing that's happened in journalism that's very important, that in fact is very directly connected to what you're going to do, whether it's in Europe, Asia, Africa, North America, is that one of the most significant trends in journalism worldwide primarily in the United States where it's such a new thing, but similarly so in the rest of the world, is that journalism is getting more opinionated and people are now turning only to the journalists whose points of view they support. So what you get is what they call the echo chamber. I write something that agrees with your politics, therefore you will read me. I will continue to write along these lines because no one is challenging me. You will continue to be reinforced in your beliefs by what I write, and you won't explore other possibilities. I think one of the things that is going to be exciting about this project, the YALA project that you're involved in, is that there will be an exchange of ideas. There will be people who aren't on your team, aren't your, who aren't on your side listening. And those are the people for whom you have even more responsibility to be honest, accurate, and fair. Now, I know some of those terms are easily distorted. But if you're going to be writing for an audience that doesn't necessarily agree with you, you need to take that into account and you need to take that into account in the way you write. A friend of mine who is an experienced diplomat, when he writes something, will often accentuate the weaknesses in his own argument and accentuate the strengths in his opponent's argument because he understands that there's no way that he can be 100% right. And theoretically, presumably, no way the other side can be 100% wrong. So acknowledging your own weaknesses is a way, not just a tactic for building support, 
but a way for you to understand that there is often another side or multiple sides to an argument, and it behooves you to look into it. In the end, you may not be convinced by that person's argument. You may think that it is full of holes, it is full of flaws, it is unfair, it is undemocratic, it is likely to lead to terrible things. I don't know. But it's important for you to explore the other side. And then when you write it, find something. I, I guarantee you, you'll find something in the other guy's positions that will be worth writing. And that kind of intellectual honesty to yourself will come through in your writing and will show itself as valuable information and will build your, the trust and credibility that you have with your audience. There are many specific things you can do. There are tests you can take. There are ways you can learn about who you are and the kind of journalism, the kind of writing, the kind of production you want to pursue. Journalism is a noble profession for all of its flaws, for all of its failures, for all of its moral failings, for all of its errors. I believe strongly that it is a highly moral, highly valuable skill, highly important field in which to work, especially in this day and age, because there is so much information out there. People really need to know what's good, what's worthwhile. And again, the way to get at it is to be honest with yourself and honest with the people you're writing for. So in conclusion, let me just say one last thing. You wouldn't be doing this if you weren't passionate about your beliefs. And that's a good thing. That passion can and should come across in your writing. You shouldn't let your passion blind you to what else is out there, to the exclusion of other ideas. And it's, it's a form of intellectual dishonesty to ignore what's out there and to be a polemicist. If you wouldn't be going into this project if you didn't have passion. That's important. Your passion can and should come through in what you're doing. But you shouldn't let your passion blind you to what else is out there. If that's what happens, you become a polemicist. You become not necessarily an advocate. It's okay to be an advocate. You become someone who isn't intellectually honest with themselves, and that will shine through in your writing as well. People will not believe you, or the only people who do believe you will be people already convinced to your point of view, and you won't be able to reach anyone else. Everyone else will put down blinders. Your willingness to listen, to accept and absorb the other sides or another point of view, even if you don't agree with it, your willingness to accept the weaknesses in your own argument are going to be the things that bring you the audience, that bring you the credibility, that may in fact have some real impact on life in this part of the world. I applaud you for this project. I hope that we can create a dialogue and go deeper into this. I will make myself available to you for any questions you may have, whether it's a small, specific issue or a deeper philosophical one. And I'm hoping that we get to meet and work together. Thank you.